Welcome to the Nut House. Today we're going to make some interesting things and I'm going to try not to injure myself again. I've already stabbed myself once this morning and um, I was afraid I wasn't going to get this done because I was going to be in the ER getting a tetanus shot. So, shot. So far so good. No blood, no streaks. So, all I can tell you is when you open a, a thing of diamond glaze and you clip the top off and you try to pop it open, don't do it with a nasty, rusty, old, skinny file because it could slip and puncture you. That's what I did. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Hillary's blog hop, her warm and fuzzy blog hop, which requires a kit, which we have at Bisu Boutiques. The thing is, whether you do the hop or not, the kit could help you, or you can buy the parts separate. We're going to be talking about making cuffs. Did you ever make a cuff before? See, I had a cuff on. This is a steampunk cuff. Can you get that rub? You know, somebody was actually talking this morning, um, or recently, on a vintage uh, listserv about, is steampunk out or going out? I don't think so. Do you think so? I don't think so. You know, it's been around like forever before it even had a name. I was doing it 20 years ago, and I know somebody was doing it 20 years before that. So, I think it's here to stay. I think it's a style genre. But anyway, back to cuffs. Talking about making cuffs, they're not hard. You can do it. And uh, this blog hop's going to be really fine. You can get in co contact with Hillary via her blog, Frystyle, at blog, Blogspot. Yeah, Frystyle Blog. We'll put the um, URL in the little thing, you know, for YouTube so you can go there and check in with Hillary. Even if the hop's over to you see this, go check out Hillary's blog because she is a master of ideas and color and she can help you out. And so can we. And here's how I'm going to do it, by showing you the thing. Now first what we're going to do is we're going to prepare some images in kind of some funky little new ways maybe. Uh, talk about that first and how you can put it under a lens because the kit has a lens with it, an art bubble, if you will, that mounts onto a cuff. So we're going to step over to the other side of the yes, still very messy workshop and show you some more mess that I made, but how you can make it into something beautiful to put on your wrist and be proud of. So. Come on over here with me and let's get at it. Okay, so we're back about the Fry Style Warm and Fuzzy Blog Hop, which is a really cool concept that you have to go to Hillary's um, website or her blog and read about. It's Fry Style at uh, FrystyleBlogspot.com. Like I say, I'll put the URL in the, in the thing so you can copy paste it and go there. But anyway, the kit for this um, blog hop consists of this this cuff, which is really a nifty cuff. Now you will have some highs and lows in the finish because brass ox normally does, especially on a flat surface, so don't let that freak you out. It's made to look old. It does look old. This indent cuff is the easiest cuff you can possibly work with, and we carry it. I think it's cuff 8500 or 08500. You can easily find it in the bases and blanks section at bsuperboutiques.com. But the reason it's so easy is you have this middle surface which of course then you leave this exposed or not but it, if you want to it's easy then you, all you're going to do is you're going to glue this on here and then you're going to set something under the bubble and then if you want you can add fiber, bead, wire, more images that you decoupage kind of on here anything you want that's up to you because that's the thing you want to see what everybody does with these three components okay all right, now before I show you how to assemble this to this, because you might be a little stymied, this is one that I did yesterday. And this is what it's going to look like finished. This is all set up and glued. Now what you're going to want to do, and it is a little crooked, but not bad, you want to get it lined up so that, you know, your little decorations line up, you know, and, and aren't askew, which this one looks like it's just a little bit, but it's not enough to worry about. Anyway, but you'll see when you're done, see here's your glue through here, you can see it's really very, very secure. This is not coming off here unless you get pliers and pry it off. The E6000 is very strong. But what you get, you say, well, you know, I don't really like how that looks. Well, see, this is where you could take fiber and wind it under there, or you could take wire and do some kind of thing, or you could take more images and decoupage them along in here and get them going. Whatever you want. See, that's what the challenge is, is you're supposed to, you know, figure that out for you. But I'm going to show you how to set this up so this won't slide when you glue it, okay? Um, on my Facebook page yesterday, I was saying, hey, you guys remember what Ballantini is? Well, this is Ballantini. 
I don't carry it right now, but it's not that hard to find. The thing is, you don't even need that. You could just get some kind of pellets, <laughs> two little things, bowls of cat food or something, you know, something that you can set something down in and it'll stay, you know. But I like Valentini. I happen to have a lot of it, and I use it for this. Like when I made this ring, I think maybe you remember the video. Remember how I made it sit up in there so it would, you know, glue and sit down good? So I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so I'm going to glue this on here and hopefully do a good job. Now you don't need a ton of glue. Go right in the middle. Go right in the middle with it and kind of smear it. And that, my friends, should be plenty. More than that, I, I just, I don't know, I just can't dream you need more than that. Okay, now here's my technique. Here's the thing. I want to line this up, maybe so that I have a point to the top, you know, in the motif. And then I'm going to put it sideways and kind of slide it on. That kind of mushes the glue around underneath and gets it where it needs to be. And then I look at it and I eyeball it and I make sure that it's nice and centered and looks really good. See, can you get over my shoulder there, Rob, so we can show them. and line it up. You're like, you don't want too much hanging down here, too much up here. Okay, so when you get it just right and it's looking good, then you set it down in your Valentine. And then you'll take another look at it and make sure it's just where you want it because it's going to dry like that. Okay? So now I'm going to move it and get it out of the way. But that's basically it. So how long did that take, huh? You know, we did it on YouTube and I didn't even screw it up. So even if you never did this before, you're going to be better than me. Okay, so images. Different ways you can do them. Um, these are some little images we just got in today. Now, they don't fit in this bezel, but I'm just going to show you a how not and how to. This is an easy way. A lot of people are used to, like, taking Mod Podge, something like this, decoupage finish or Mod Podge, and sloshing it over the top and then letting it dry and sloshing it over the bottom because you have to seal images if you're going to put uh, something over them or if you're going to glue to the back, okay? In this case, we're going to put the art bubble over them, so you don't have to worry about resin. Um, but we are going to glue to the back, and we don't want anything to get, you know, bleed through. So I've sealed them. Now here's one way you can seal them for resin too. But here's right and here's wrong. Okay, I used packing tape. Try not to get dirty packing tape. Um, and I've put it on here. But you got to get it nice and flat. See, I got this big old dimple here. I'm not going to be able to use these images because of that. And also, do you see how I didn't get it all the way down across there? I've got spots so it'll get under there. So I'm going to have to look for images on here. Like here's another place where I missed. I did this on purpose, guys, so I could show you the foibles of it. Um, so you got to get it nice and straight and flat. So you got to have a nice smooth hand. Don't be drinking too much coffee. Take a little time with it. Don't hurry because a hurry is going to get you this. But there are still some good usable images. And then I've taken an overlapped masking tape on the bottom. And this is, again, so no glue will get through. Nothing will get through that image when I go to set it. Okay, so here are some Art Chicks images that I did yesterday. Okay, this one's set up. Um, maybe I'll do this one. No, uh, see, I got a little bit of um, diamond glaze, or actually the Sculpey, what is it, glossy accents on top of it, so they need to be clean. But you get that off of Google on really easy. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and do this one. You trim it carefully, but don't trim it too deep in because it will cause it to lift. But what I've done is I've actually just taken the art bubble and smeared glossy accents at the back of it. And I'm going to show you how I did that in a minute. I just cut that out, see? Okay. Now I need to seal that with my masking tape. Which I really I really should have done that first. Yeah, this one already had not done. Okay, whatever. Whatever. We'll handle it. It's one of them days. Great English. One of those days. I just had to get back to making videos. You guys were writing in all the time. When's your next video? We missed you. It's like I miss doing them too. But I had to go to California. A lot of you guys knew that. I went to the Craft and Hobby Association show out there. And um, there was a lot of getting ready to do that. And a lot of stuff to deal with when I got back. So now I'm back. And off we go. But you see how I trimmed that off there. Don't go too deep because like I say it will lift. But now see with this masking tape. 
you can, you know, glue or do something to the back of this so that, you know, it won't bleed through the image. Now, there is a little bleed through on this, and I'm going to tell you why this happened. In fact, I'm going to show you why this happened. Here's one that I did a little bit ago with um, diamond glaze instead, and I got some over the top, which will happen. Like I say, you can get that off. Sometimes water will take it off, but if not, um, then you want to do goo gone on the swab. It'll take it off. But just to show you the technique, see if I can do it on camera and not mess it up before we run out of time. Anyway, get make sure that your bubble is clean. You do this to the back. You take your diamond glaze and just go like this. Okay. Now, same thing. Um, with the glossy accents, if you like that better, then fine, you use that. I don't know if we carry it anymore. We used to. I just kind of like diamond glaze better, and to me, it was kind of the same thing. So, but, you know, maybe you may beg to differ, whatever. Okay, so I've got this on here, and most of the bubbles are out. Now I'm just going to take it. i got a few in there, but we're going to deal with them. I'm going to put it over her. Now I'm going to center it. I've got it on my fingers. Just kind of go like this. If you get some on the, like I said, you can clean it off. Kind of go like that because that kind of works the bubbles out. Okay. Now you might say, "Oh, it looks good. I'm done." No, you're not because this is going to lift off a little bit, and then you'll get more bubbles in it. So this is what I do. I take a bottle of something. Um, this Lumiere. I've been corrected on this. Let's call it Lumiere. I didn't realize. Oh, this is French. Okay, Lumiere means light. Very accurate because it's got mica in it. It's a light bearing um, paint. We're not painting today, but I'm just using the jar. <laughs> and I'm using the jar as a weight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on top of there and just let it sit till it dries. And that will help to keep the bubbles out. Okay? So let me put this aside for now. That's how I did it. And then when I was done, I We'll take this. See, this one's got one glued to it. See, so just glue it right on there. And then I will cover that, as I did here, with the tape and cut it out. All right? So now we're going to set one. All right? Um, you can just set this, like, right in here. Woohoo! And you could just say, okay, I'm done. But why would you when you could do more to it, right? That's my you know, You could just glue that in there. But what I like to do is if you want to go a step further, you can get a 30 millimeter shallow wall bezel from us and put that in there for a more finished look. And now you don't have to worry either about the tape. And I'm going to show you another cool thing about this. Here's another one that's done. It's got the tape on it. Here's the 30 millimeter bezel. Now with a little bit of fiddling, a little fiddling, you can usually get this to set right down in there. Yep, look at this in there. You don't even need to glue that now. That's in there to stay. You'd have to pry it out. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now that you know that, you got that little cushion on the back there that helps it. It's ready to go. So now that could go in there, right? Easy. Okay, or let's take it to the next level. Here is a number five. Tim Holtz paper that I got and I put this bezel and I glued it in there like that okay and I've got my thing set down in the th the bezel and my art bubble okay I want to prong it okay these are so simple I'm going to show you how these bend over with your fingernails it's so silly it's so simple it's ridiculous but you have to glue it in first okay if you don't glue it in first it's going to be slip sliding all over the place so I'm going to show you how to glue one in. But look, that, look, that looks good. And it's kind of off-center, too, kind of like me. A little bit off-center, a little bit left of center, or right of center, whatever. But that makes a nice finish, too, doesn't it? And we have these on the site, too. I don't have the skew number, but they would be in the bases and mounts. I think we have them in pewter rocks, also. But that's another way that you can go with it. Um, here's something I did. I put this mount on the back of this. This I put... Lumiere paint down in and some art shards and some other stuff, a little bit of diamond glaze. And then I took an art bubble, put over that. Ooh, now it looks like the moon or something. And then I stuck it in here. That was cool. But what I would do first, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. 
I am going to be bold and do it right here for you. Okay? Just take a little bit of E on a toothpick. Don't need much. See if I can do this neatly for you because I'm just kind of. I've had kind of a rough morning. No, I'm not doing it neatly. What are you kidding? But you're getting the point. I can clean this up later. Okay. But I don't like touching the stuff with my fingers. I've talked to you about that, how it's, you know, nasty and all that, but it's the glue to use. Okay, now I'm going to sit this down in there. Okay. Now this will have to set up. You can't just go ahead and put this bubble on it. You've got to let this set up and glue first. There might be a little mess to clean up in the back. Again, glue, go, glue goo gone on a swab will take care of that for you. And then what you'll do is bend it over. And then if you want it, you can put that in there. I don't know. I'm going to be in this blog hop too. I might do this. I might do this in some fire. I don't know, it's hard. I like my little Art Chicks images. If you like these type of images, go to artchicks.com and get them. I don't carry them anymore. Um, we don't carry a lot of images. We do carry some images from Bottle Cap Company. That's Travis over there. I think he's in Idaho. Made in the United States. Love it. Gotta love it. Made in the United States. Travis does this. He and his family. I met him at Cha. So, uh, anyway... I think it's time to go for today. We're going to have these on the site probably by the weekend if you want to pick some up. If you have any questions, contact me at bsuboutiques.com. And last thing I want to say is, Margo, thank you for this beautiful card. Miss Margo Steampunk, here's a bisu, here's a bisu. She did some cute stuff and gave this card to me. And I just got it in the mail today. So thanks, doll. I appreciate you. And we'll catch you hopefully next week with another video.